here I am. Um, okay, so welcome back again. I hope you refilled. Uh, this is the last session of the day, and I think it's one of the, it's probably the most important, I think, at the end, because in terms of speaking as the uh, uh, coordinator, because it's very important to disseminate our work, but also to collaborate with others, which are uh, being funded today uh, by the same co. Uh, we're working towards the same mission, which is the EOSC. We had several 07 projects, uh, again, which uh, are today represented by Deborah Gergli, Raul and Christian. Uh, they will tell us about uh, their initiatives, which are working on uh, still horizontal, but in, in some cases, uh, community specific efforts towards uh, service provision and resource provisions for, for the USC. So the first speaker will be Deborah Testi. Uh, presenting DICE, so the Data Infrastructure Capacity for EUSC, uh, it's an extensive name. Um, this uh, work uh, engages with the UDAT and previous work on that and several work and actions in the EUSC Hub as well, and uh, they will tell us more. Uh, Gergely Stipos, uh, colleague and now friend, we know each other for a while, representing EGIA, uh, which again is uh, uh, one of the actions that uh, offers uh, and extends in uh, several aspects uh, uh, tool specific and community specific services for GI towards the USC and Reliance is in scale, which are two uh, uh, quite uh, uh, important actions. And I think also um, appealing from my point of view because they are focusing somehow on the communities but at the same time trying to offer general purpose services. Um, represented by Raul and Christian. So I will now give the floor to Deborah, who's the first speaker. And uh, thanks again for being here to all of you. Hi, Paolo. Thanks for the invitation and for the organization of this very interesting event. Uh, I agree with you that the collaboration between uh, our respective projects in this call is very important, uh, not only to strengthen our own projects, but to strengthen the, the EOSC in general and what we can provide to the community. So thank you very much for this. I'll now share my screen if I can. Okay, thank you very much for confirmation. So um, as Paolo uh, already introduced, uh, I'm Deborah Testi. I work at the Cineca Supercomputing Center in Italy uh, and I'm the project coordinator of the DICE project. Um, as already said, DICE has been funded in the same uh, call as uh, um, Open Air at Nexus, uh, one of the infra Co 7 projects. So we start at the same time and we will have the same duration. Uh, we have 24 partners and our aim is, of, is related to the provisioning of the data management infrastructure to USC. Uh, so between our 24 um, partners, we have most of them that are service provider. Uh, this because also as for the other uh, Imprius 07 project, the uh, more than half that our budget is to provide services and resources uh, to users and communities. So uh, the majority of the partners are service provider, but we engage also with some user communities and we have partners to support sustainability and outreach. Um, as, um, as Paolo said before, uh, the, uh, the service provider that are coming together into DICE uh, have a long experience working together. Uh, some of them have been working together since the start of UDAT. Uh, we have also some new uh, partners, uh, not UDAT members, that are helping us to support the uh, service provisioning, uh, but with which we have collaborated already for since many years. So it's a very strong uh, and very well connected group of providers. Um, so which are the objective of DICE, uh, as I mentioned in general, is to enable the data management infrastructure for EOSC. Uh, so um, the main, the central, the core of the activities is the uh, provisioning of services and not only services, but also the um, resources behind the services to uh, enable a fair workflow for, for communities. Uh, but we also we will also work to um, uh, extend a little bit the uh, 
data management service offer by uh, working on long-term preservation policies uh, to support sensitive data and the, uh, to work with but on the connection between the data services and the uh, computing part. Um, the, um, the will be also a part of the work that will be related to uh, keeping connection and updating the connection with the, the U score as it will evolve in the next years so that we will be try to remain compliant with our services uh, to the different EOSC uh, rule of participation as they will they will uh, be uh, evolving uh, in the next years. Um, so a little bit more details on what we are uh, offering in terms of services, at least for uh, in general as categories. Um, this is a representation of the research data workflow um, that normally um, uh, is being followed, uh, even if maybe not in all the steps, but starting from the data collection to the uh, data publication uh, uh, and uh, basically the what DICE uh, services are trying to cover is all the um, from the storage of the raw data coming from the pre-processing up to uh, when they are ready to be uh, more globally, globally uh, searchable and published. Uh, if we look at the same diagram, but put it into a the pyramid um, representation, so we can classify the uh, DICE offering into different categories. So first of all, we have services to cover the uh, what we call project or personal workspace, which is the short-term, mid-term storage that uh, is used during the execution of a project. So where the data are um, um, changing um, and being updated frequently. Uh, on top of this, we have a data archive, which is mid-term storage uh, to be used in between projects or after a project has been completed. Uh, and um, to, uh, so it's related to less active research data. Um, then we have policy-based data archive, which is mid-long-term archive, uh, again for non-active research data, which added adds on top of data archive um, uh, additional services like integrity checks, replication, uh, so it's for very stable data archives. Uh, then we have a data repository to share the, uh, the final data uh, with other members of the communities or to the generic public in according to FAIR principle. And then we have some data discovery service to find and, uh, um, the data that has been published. Um, if we look at uh, the different, this type of services are very different and we have uh, basic services. So some of these services can be already accessed uh, with a web interface. They do not require any specific configuration or authorization by the service provider. They can just be used as is. Uh, but we have also more, we can um, satisfy more specific requests uh, and we classify the service into standard request and into more customized uh, solution for specific communities or user. The difference between the last two is basically mostly on the uh, time needed to fulfill the request and make the service available uh, to, the, to the customer. Um, so if we put together the two type of categorization, the one that I've shown before uh, and this one, we see that in DICE we try to cover as much as possible all the categories of services uh, with as much as possible different option for user community. So to be as general as we can and be able to satisfy um, the most uh, possibly. Uh, all the needs that will come up uh, in during the project. Um, in the end, we will have 14 services offered. So we have more than 40 installation for virtual access. Um, and we are, these are supported by more than 50 petabytes of storage offered by the different service provider. Um, some of the services are already available through the US portal uh, that are the, the one that have been already in production since a while. Uh, but more uh, installation, more service provider will join and more services will be made available in the next couple of months uh, through the US portal. Um, which are the expected impacts of DICE? Uh, obviously first to scale up the offer 
provided via the ETS portal uh, to provide scientific communities with uh, state-of-the-art services in data management and to facilitate the uh, open science practice and for supporting the FAIR principle, uh, to foster synergy between pan-European infrastructures, uh, support the collaboration in data provisioning and exchange across, across infrastructure, and obviously try to incentivize the uh, public actors to open up services and resources to researchers. Um, in terms of collaboration, as this is uh, the session on path of collaboration, um, so DICE uh, plans to actively collaborate with, uh, in general, all the um, European initiatives. But in particular, we are looking forward to work together with the other 07 project and the 03 project when we start. Um, we also would like to build a strong connection with user community. We um, have already, as I mentioned at the beginning, few communities part of the project. We, uh, but this is limited due to budget constraints, but we plan to uh, engage uh, very actively with other communities uh, outside of the project consortium uh, in the next uh, month. So this is a brief summary. Uh, hope it was clear enough, but if you have questions, just feel free to ask or to contact me by email in the, in the future. Thank you very much, Deborah. <clears throat> So I would suggest to uh, continue, write your questions if you have any in the chat and to continue with the presentation so we can have uh, a final discussion. Yep. Uh, if this is fine with you. So I think next one in the in line is uh, Gergely, am I right? Yes, that's correct. <laughs> Good afternoon. Can you see my slide? Yes. Yeah, great. So welcome everyone to this EGI ACE overview presentation. I'm Gergely Shipos, I work for the EGI Foundation and as Paolo nicely introduced me, we work together for several years now on different infrastructure projects. I represent one of the compute uh, project in this landscape um, and I work as the technical coordinator of this project uh, since January. And let me start with a brief overview of the objectives. So this project is very much focused on the computing aspect. The first objective is very specifically about this, delivering the so-called cloud compute platform of the European Open Science Cloud, offering compute capabilities to, to users. The second is linking to, to data management and to, to the so-called European data commons uh, structure and vision. And particularly the project aims to build so-called data spaces, which is basically a collection of scientific data sets that are hosted on or near compute resources together with some analytic systems, portals, gateways, workflow systems uh, that enables uh, exploitation of the data by scientific audiences. Uh, the objective three is about integrating the platform with the EOS core Actually, I have some uh, uh, animation here. Objective three is about linking this compute platform and the data commons with the EOSC through the EOSC core. And objective four and five are more outside looking. Uh, number four is about working with initiatives that are similar to EOSC and similar to the compute platform outside of Europe. And number five is working with different providers that are not just in the consortium, but wish to join this compute platform as we go ahead in the next 30 months. <clears throat> Similarly to, the, to Nexus and to DICE, uh, this project is very much focused on delivery of ready to use services. Uh, more than half of the budget is on service provisioning. The, core, the total budget of the project is around 12 million out of which 80 million comes from the commission and 4 million is contributed by the members of the EGI Federation. The whole consortium is coordinated by the EGI Foundation, which is coordinator of the Pan-European EGI Federation. And the consortium largely or primarily uh, is built from members of this EGI Federation and is expanding with different scientific communities who contribute to this data spaces work and act as early adopters of the overall setup. And what this setup is about is shown on this picture. 
uh, indicating a kind of architectural layout of the different layers where we position our services. We start fundamentally with the low level infrastructure services, which consist of different research clouds operated by universities, research institutes, public clouds operated by commercial entities, uh, high throughput compute systems, clusters that are designed for uh, massively parallel applications and high performance computing systems that are supercomputers that are uh, suitable for um, closely uh, coupled applications. On top of these infrastructure services, we have different kind of federation tools that enables and allow users and user applications to use multiple infrastructure clouds, multiple clusters, multiple supercomputers together. This is achieved by providing federated computing, job distribution systems, federated identity management, a single sign-on across systems, and federated data access, enabling access to distributed data from any of these compute systems. As we move closer to the, to the user layer or the, or the top layer, we have more user facing uh, capabilities such as interfaces, web portals designed for interactive computing, automated deployment of scalable clusters in these underlying systems, um, different services designed for artificial intelligence and machine learning applications and frameworks that help uh, user portals distribute a uh, high number of jobs and tasks across the available uh, capacities. On top, we have these data spaces. I will have further slides about that one. Basically, these are the science discipline specific capabilities that are offered for certain disciplinary areas that incorporates applications, visualization tools that are designed and coming from that discipline. And they exploit the underlying compute and federation capabilities. All these services are connected together through different service management tools, processes, and policies, by which we mean uh, different uh, monitoring systems, for example, that observe the availability and reliability of the services, accounting systems through which we can observe who used what, how much consumption was made by each community or use case, um, and the documentation that the different service providers use in order to ensure uh, responsiveness towards the use cases. All this tech is delivered through the EOSC portal and made available for EOSC users. And let me just show you one, one example that combination of these elements is possible for a given use case or for, for a given setup. And for example, the project provides a so-called notebook service, which is some of you may know is based on the Jupyter notebooks, which is a web-based uh, interactive computing environment through which one can write scripts, one can write codes and mix that with documentation, mix that with multimedia content. This EGI notebook service, which is supported by the project, uh, offers access to big data that's distributed across the network, can be sitting in different uh, scientific repositories and can import those big data into this interactive compute environment to perform, to define and run uh, analysis. Another service that this whole use case can rely on uh, is the GitHub and the Zenodo uh, repository that uh, many of you know from, from the previous presentations and from the previous years. Uh, the setup enables users to export uh, their notebooks and store them for the long term and share them through Zenodo. And then other users can reproduce basically the same analysis by importing those notebooks from Zenodo into the so-called binder service that EGIS offers and then import the same big data and rerun the same analytics uh, again or in a customized way. So that's, that's an example of how the co cloud compute services the different uh, federation services and the interactive computing capabilities are all integrated together and work together also with GitHub and Zenodo to reproduce uh, big data analytics. The full portfolio of our services is quite large. 
we have 61 providers and they contribute to 31 different types of services. You can see here that the largest contributor list is under the cloud compute service, indicating that a major part of this project is delivering infrastructure as a service cloud compute capabilities. This cloud compute enables the users to run their own applications to set up their own system within remote servers. The other services that we provide add extra capabilities on, on top of this, this underlying infrastructure. Many of these services of these 31 different types of services are already available in the YOSC portal. If those of you who know the portal in the marketplace section, there is a so-called communities and infrastructures grouping. And within that, you can already find the EGIAs as a community or grouping. And if you click there, you can see the 25 or so, maybe a bit more services that are already available out of these 31 that I showed earlier. And through this, you can either access the services immediately because there is already ready to use configurations or you can request your own setup uh, from the provider. One of the recurring questions is how capacity is allocated and how it's managed by the project. We have a large number of capacity providers who provide this cloud, high throughput compute and high performance computer, supercomputers. And they assign this capacity on one hand to communities that are already in the project, and I will talk about them in a minute, and obviously for new users, because that's the point of the whole project, to be open for new business. The total capacity you can see here is distributed between traditional CPU-based computers, GPUs, and also storage that's available for mid or short term usage. It's basically a scratch face that one can use while doing a certain calculations. All this compute capacity is allocated through a mix of funding mechanisms. On one hand, we use the virtual access funding model and we have 16 providers using that one and they are paid by the commission to deliver the capacity. So the access is free for any new user community. These 16 providers has been selected during the proposal preparation based on their location and the type of compute flavor they can offer uh, in order to be able to cater for diverse needs. But we also have agreement as a project with additional providers who are not paid by the commission, but who are paid by their national government or funding agency or ministry to deliver compute capacity through EOSC for um, different types of audiences. And integrating those policy-based access providers enables us to extend the total capacity that we can assign for new use cases. We need to consider those different policy constraints that they have. Very often they are open for users who are coming from their own country, but doing this intelligent brokering and allocation of capacity, we can hopefully satisfy all the incoming use cases. We also have pay for use providers, cloud for MT systems, who offer capacity for payment. So the payment on this case is, is for the users. And we have also four sites that deliver supercomputers for piloting activities in the project. And how this capacity is assigned to users is shown on the, on the next slide. We basically work with or expect to work with two types of use cases. One is that kind of long tail of science use cases, the smaller user groups or users who want to try out things before going into more serious business, they can come in and they can uh, access the capacity through the EOS portal. We have ready to use allocations that is open for many of the users. And on the other hand, we expect to have more complex use cases from multinational and international communities where we need to fine tune the, the setup. We need to allocate significant capacity in a given set of countries or sites. We aim to attract those use cases and serve those use cases through a call that we will publish very soon in the coming weeks. And we plan to have a cutoff date or evaluation three times per year for the submit, submissions. And through those evaluation process, we will 
assign providers to each use case uh, who will serve the use case and support them for aiming for the longer term and customized engagement. The scientific communities that are in the project are represented here. On one hand, we have um, th these so-called data spaces that I mentioned is basically a mix of infrastructure capacity services, storage and compute together with domain specific libraries and applications all combined together and offered as an integrated setup, for example, typically as a web portal through the YOSC portal. We have 13 of these data spaces. You can see here the, the scientific uh, distribution and also the names of the different uh, communities who offer them. Very often they are linked to uh, S3 research infrastructures or similar in, in international uh, initiatives. We will not just deliver these data spaces services, but also perform a fair maturity assessment on those in order to ensure that they not just support users, but support scientists in such a way that the final outcome of the research those researchers conduct are meeting the fairness criteria of EOSC and enrich EOSC with new scientific outcomes. We also have other types of user communities in the project. We call them early adopters. They basically are less mature. They are not aiming to become providers in EOSC. They want to use the EGIS services in order to carry out certain computing um, activities. And let me close with, with some thoughts on, on possible interaction with, with the with Nexus and with the other 07 projects. We had the first similar meeting uh, at the EGIS um, public launch event. So my ideas or our ideas are based on, on, on the knowledge there. Also, I slightly fine tuned these messages based on what I heard this morning. So what, one is, I think we, we should work together on, on closing this, this whole research cycle and make this research cycle as easy to carry out for researchers as possible. Paolo started with this virtual cycle in his presentation. Fortunately, I couldn't take a screenshot. I, I wanted to include something like that. Basically here, the idea is that uh, EGIAs would fit into the, I think the left side of, of that slide that Paolo presented more in the computing and short term midterm storage space. And we should work with, with DICE, with, with Zenodo, with, with Nexus on, on, on importing scientific items into this computing model and pushing these final scientific outcomes or computing outcomes uh, in the form of publications or in form of data sets into, into these longer term archives and repositories and catalogs. The second is working together on, on tracking the impact. Let's say uh, impact of EGIAs, for example, from my perspective or our perspective, this could be based on the EGI community dashboard, which, which we have in a beta version. I think we should move forward and, and move that into the latest uh, dashboard and, and tools that you presented this morning. Uh, we probably should, should discuss how, how to do that and how to, how to customize it in such a way that we can capture EGI impact and we can capture EGI ACE impact and we can capture EGI ACE users impact uh, in that. Uh, you mentioned earlier that, that some of these will be part of the EOS core or are part of the EOS core. I think we need to understand what are those and probably start with those uh, as, as the EOS core is expected to be the long-term entity that we need to interface with. Um, <clears throat> very specifically with the Earth's observation project, C scale and Reliance, we, we work or we have work on hopefully on the integration of their services and data with the compute platform that EGIS provides. Uh, number four is to, to align the support for the big communities. Uh, there are, or there is common communities in some of the projects that we work in. I think we should seek for these, these commonalities as we go ahead and, and sign up and support new use cases. One of the activities that I mentioned EGIS will conduct is this so-called fairness assessment um, of the EGIS data spaces. Uh, maybe some of you who, who did something similar uh, could help us in here. Number five is, is the grid computing, green computing, uh, which is about lowering the, the environmental impact and CO2 emission of, of the overall compute platform that we deliver. I expect that, that your project has a similar activity there. I think we sh that's, that's something worth to, to be aligned on 
what are the practices that you will apply and we will apply in order to have some, some, some joint activities here. And the, and the number six is, the, I think, the, the simplest is cross-project promotion and dissemination of the results of the opportunities that we all make available for EOSC users. So uh, as a summary, EJS delivers the compute platform, which consists of basically two layers. One is the, the compute continuum with HTC cloud, HPC machines, and related platforms. And there are these online data analytics services, the data spaces. We are already open for business. Most of the services we deliver are, are accessible through the EOS portal, and we will have a call for use cases published very soon with the first so-called cutoff date or selection uh, to be later in the spring. Next week, we will have a meeting with, with uh, Paolo and, and some of your colleagues from Open and Access. So I think that will be the, the real uh, work where we start the joint endeavor. Thank you. Gregory, thank you very much. The last input was uh, precious and I think aligned with uh, what many of us have, have in mind, but with concrete ideas. So thank you very much. So shall we continue with uh, Raul? Yes, hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hello, Raul, thank you for being hi. here. Uh, thank you everybody, and especially Paolo for, for putting this together. I am very happy to be here as well. Okay, so um, for everybody, I mean, my name is Raul Palma. I am um, I'm working at the Poznan Supercomputing and Networking Center in, in Poland. This is the, the largest HPC provider in Poland. Um, and I am the coordinator of uh, Reliance Project. Uh, this is one of the 07 projects, as it has been mentioned before, but we are in the topic of A6, which was about uh, extending the research enabling services in EOSC. Uh, so, at a glance, in short, Reliance, I mean, first of all, it stands for this long title, but, but basically it captures what we are doing uh, in Reliance. So, it's um, the research lifecycle management technologies for earth science communities and Copernicus users in EOST. This is what we are doing um, in a very short title. Uh, now, in particular, Reliance seeks to extend the EOS capabilities with an enhanced support uh, to uh, different research activities through a set of uh, different interconnected services, which are quite innovative and in alignment with the EOS interoperability framework, which actually is a few of the authors are part of our team. Uh, Reliance also through the adoption of a holistic uh, research management approach, it aims to enhance the discovery of and the access to research data and resource with particular focus on Copernicus data, improve the extraction of relevant information, managing the research life cycle while promoting the first and open science principles. So this is of course um, uh, very much aligned with other uh, projects of 07, but um, uh, we are going in a, into a higher level as I will show you in, a, in our next slides. So um, our pilot, I mean, our project will pilot and demonstrate the services and their value in three earth science communities. And we will engage others via some open call with the goal, especially to foster the use of Copernicus data and to enhance in general, the support in EOS for multidisciplinary research, improving the EU science as a whole. The project is, uh, is a shorter uh, with compared to the previous one. So we are 24 months. We have a smaller budget is to 2 million uh, euro uh, budget, but we started together with the others. Uh, so in, in January, 2021. Um, so the service portfolio of Reliance is based on three key and complementary technologies and approaches that these are basically uh, what comprise the ecosystem that we are planning to deliver. So first of all, we have uh, research objects, which is uh, use as the over overarching mechanisms to manage uh, scientific research activities and connect associated resources. I will give you a bit more of context of uh, research objects later on, uh, but uh, the technology behind this is called AROHA. So this is, uh, has been a project we have been working for several years already. Um, and uh, we have uh, over around 3,000 research, research objects in, in, the, in the repository at this moment. Uh, next, we have some data cubes, um, which are basically providing the mechanisms for enabling efficient and scalable um, access to uh, and discovery of uh, data and access, particularly uh, air observation data. So the platform behind this is called Adam, which already uh, includes several petabytes of um, 
uh, data coming from Copernicus. Um, then we have uh, services for text mining and enrichment that will allow to extract uh, machine readable metadata from resources in the research object, enabling researchers, for example, to discover scientific information at scale and structure their own research. The technology behind this or the service behind this is called Cogito from our, uh, one of our partners in the, in the consortium. Um, so based on that, uh, we can say, uh, summarize the objectives of Reliance in the following. First of all, when we want to provide a suite of um, uh, services for the research lifecycle management that are based on research objects, uh, uh, data cubes, and text mining, which are in compliance with FAIR principles. Uh, we are aiming to integrate you know, on board, of course, all of our services into EOS, leveraging and connecting with other uh, complementary services that are already available there. Uh, we will demonstrate uh, and validate uh, the value of uh, our services through several um, uh, use cases in real life scenarios. In particular, we have one uh, multidisciplinary use case uh, and uh, five thematics um, Earth observation use cases that I will also briefly mention at the end of this presentation. And finally, our goal is to foster the adoption of uh, Copernicus data and AO services in such communities uh, to increase the impact of this um, in, in the whole European context. So in terms of the project partners, uh, the consortium is, uh, is uh, smaller. So we are just nine partners uh, from five European countries. Um, particularly, we have three research communities uh, involved there. So these communities are from the earth science. I will show you a little bit later about them. We have five technical partners and four of those partners are from the industry. And you see in the in the slide the geographic distribution. Uh, okay, so being uh, as one of the backbone technologies in Reliance, it's important to give a bit of overview of research objects. And probably some of you already know about this, um, and we have heard even the, 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 the word research objects through the presentations in the past. So we, we started to work with this uh, for many years ago, from 2009 more or less, um, in a project called War for Forever, but this has evolved, of course, during the years and several branches have started to spread in different directions. But all, of, all, all in all, we are still having a community about research objects. Uh, we are having, uh, probably you also, you, some of you know, this Arrow Crate community that we are part of, of course, uh, as one of the initiators of these uh, initiatives. But research objects is basically a, a rich information object that accounts and describes and shares everything about your research, including how things are related to each other in a way that is understandable by both humans and machines. They are, uh, of course, um, you can think of them as a kind of logical container that is, uh, it has a unique identifier and that um, um, connects uh, different kinds of resources that can be, for example, hypotheses, uh, the data that was used, the results that were produced, the method that you were employing and adopting, scientific workflows, the provenance, versioning information, the people that was involved, and annotations about all of these, uh, these resources. Uh, research objects have been used and demonstrated in different communities in previous projects, from bioinformatics to astronomy to earth science. And as a result, they are becoming like, um, are gaining more and more attention as uh, one of the promising research enabling technologies. Um, so based on that and, and having this in, into consideration, in this uh, picture, in this diagram, we can see a high level view of the Reliance service architecture and their connection with EOS and other existing services. So first of all, you can see in the middle, uh, we have the services of Reliance that are interconnecting and complementing each other. Uh, and that will enable researchers and uh, scientists to, to access uh, all this functionality provided in particular their work from different interfaces using the research object as the main connecting point. So all of these services will expose some RESTful APIs. Some uh, we will also generate some Python libraries uh, that will enable also the communication with different uh, services uh, in EOS, for example. But also uh, the communication and access uh, through some uh, uh, client applications. And in particular, it's important to know that uh, data cubes are uh, going to be linked in the research objects as first-class entity. So they will be described with a rich set of metadata. Um, enabling the, you know, not only the access to this uh, data that they are uh, providing, especially like Copernicus and so on, but also to enable the reproducibility um, and reusability of these me access mechanisms in the future. Then we have all of these services for text mining and enrichment that will be automatically in 
incrementing and enriching the, the research objects, metadata, uh, for example, extracting information from resources like the data cubes annotation, but also about the resources, scholarly communication resources in the research object and, and, and so on. Uh, some of these connections are already in place. So, uh, you know, we are now, of course, starting from scratch, but we, of course, need to make some uh, ad adapt adaptations to connect to, to EOSC as well. Um, and also, as you can see in the diagram, uh, we are leveraging, of course, some of the EOSC services uh, from the cross uh, core coding services, but also some advanced services that uh, can be of added value for our researchers. So um, this also includes um, uh, other existing services like the scholarly communication services, uh, you know, Jupyter notebooks from like, like the EGI notebooks that was mentioned before, uh, but also QCG um, services for HPC management resources and so on. Uh, so based on that, in, in the overall picture, you can think of Reliance as um, playing a complementary role to what is already in place, to what is already available. So Reliance services, uh, the idea is that they will act uh, at a higher level as, you know, uh, as a bridge between different uh, EOS uh, services and uh, resources that are already available. So the idea is that they will be able to connect, for example, uh, from the data that was used by researchers, uh, for example, the data cubes, but also other data in uh, EOS services or uh, repositories, methods uh, that were used to process the data that can be accessed via you know, for example, the EGI Jupyter notebooks, also the research infrastructure that we use to, to um, you know, execute all of these uh, uh, calculations or um, research in general, to the results that were published in scholarly communication services and repositories, Senodo, Open Air, and so on. But all, overall, as well, taking into account the research life cycle as a whole entity. So for example, during the research life cycle, uh, we will be able to create snapshot releases that will uh, increase and uh, um, uh, make faster the, the publication process. And for example, we will connect into, uh, again, repositories like, like Zenodo to, to deposit whatever is being produced and released. Um, and at the end of the cycle, for example, when, when the final release of the research is, is made, um, this will kind of breach and, and close the gap from the moment of the data that was gathered and, and, and accessed to the moment of the publication has been uh, released. Uh, so, just to conclude here, uh, very briefly, I want to introduce uh, our research community. So, we are that will be validating our services. We are bringing uh, three main um, uh, earth science communities that are um, working in different aspects and different disciplines. Uh, first of all, we have the sea monitoring community um, that is studying the marine habitats and the present past dynamics and the ocean. Uh, and the interface between ocean and atmosphere. Then we have the, uh, this community, first of all, is uh, uh, represented by CNR, ISMAR in Italy. They have a very large community of user, um, um, uh, community of researchers, and they have a lot of connections with others. Uh, then we have the geo geohazard community that is aiming to provide and improve the scientific knowledge of volcanic and seismic super size to support the disaster risk reduction. This community is represented by INGVU, also in Italy, but they are um, also being represented as one of the key partners of this uh, uh, Geohazard Super Science National Laboratory, where they are chairing the scientific advisory committee. So they are very strong in, in this community. And finally, uh, but not least, of course, we have the atmospheric and climate uh, modeling community that includes uh, scientists um, working on the development of numerical, meteorological, ocean and climate models. This community is represented by the University of Oslo, the Department of Geosciences. Uh, so these communities will be uh, driven the uh, one multidisciplinary use case that will be working on the, the impacts on coastal environmental during the 2020 lockdown. So this will be a very interesting thing that will you know, uh, encompass many different uh, subdisciplines. And they will also uh, have uh, five uh, thematic use cases. Um, so overall, um, this will showcase the, the Reliance services uh, and how they can support researchers and promote the cooperation among scientists in earth science. But it's also important to take into account that these services may be adapted to any other research domain. And with that, I, I just uh, uh, finish and thank you very much. And of course, I am very happy to have you on this. And thank you, Raul. Uh, I, I think uh, we would better uh, postpone the questions at the end. We also have two parallel sessions for those who are willing to participate. Um, I think it would be really worth continuing on several aspects of the discussion. Uh, 
if you have time. Uh, so we are now getting to the last uh, presentation from Christian. So I'll leave you the floor, Christian, please. Yes, thank you. I hope that you can already hear me. Yes, we can. Okay. Perfect. Here, see uh, you and yes, presentation. The, also, the slides are there, and so then I follow on. Uh, so, uh, as a last presenter now, I would also like to present our uh, activities within C scale, so the Copernicus EOS analytics engine. Uh, we are also focusing on Earth observation and have the big ambition to build an easy to use platform uh, to make use of the huge amount of Copernicus data that is available. Uh, I'm the CEO of the Earth Observation Data Center situated in Austria, and I'm also in the role of being uh, the project director of C-Scale. Yeah, within the consortium, we have a number of partners. Uh, I will uh, present them afterwards in one of my subsequent slides. Um, what is our problem statement? So uh, the European Copernicus program has really established itself as a globally predominant spatial data provider in providing more than 10 of terabytes of data per day um, that uh, basically gives insight in the current, uh, uh, current status of our Earth. Um, currently, we don't have any single European processing backend that serves all the data sets of interest towards the scientific community. That really hampers at the moment uh, the use of the data and makes it really complex. Uh, either you use some of the US services uh, where you um, maybe have also quite a number of limitations and therefore our, uh, and also maybe your concerns to use them. And therefore our big ambition within C-Scale is to provide a big uh, data analytics uh, federated infrastructure with, uh, with cloud computing and the storage architecture in order to really quickly use and analyze uh, the long-term archive uh, that needs to be established uh, for, for the Copernicus data that we all require. So therefore, we will uh, set up uh, C-Scale in a manner that we integrate it uh, with the help of several researchers and institutions over Europe uh, to build up this federated infrastructure to provide this infrastructure within EOSC so that uh, scientists can make use uh, out of it and enable state-of-the-art research uh, towards subsequent use of Earth observation data for other scientific disciplines, for strategic dis European decisions, facilitating the European Green Deal ambitions, uh, facilitating also uh, the new initiative from the Commission called Destination Earth, uh, where basically a digital twin of the Earth shall be established in order to uh, analyze processes on the Earth, uh, possible future influences, and uh, looking at uh, and compare the current status with, um, yeah, with past statuses of the Earth. Uh, so that's where we want to contribute. So the high level of objective of uh, C-Scale is to integrate uh, this federated computing and data platform into EOSC. We uh, will include the users from the very beginning in order to, yeah, to set up a system that is really uh, perfectly fits to their needs. So we will have uh, an architecture blueprint. We will have a constant onboarding process so to no new users, but also to new service providers so that uh, this federation really also goes beyond the project partners. So that's really one of our goals. So we will not limit ourselves within the project. We want to set up something where others uh, can contribute from an IT perspective, from a data perspective, but also from, um, from a user perspective. Yeah, so uh, where did we start? We had a look on the current situation in Europe. So the, we have the dioceses that have been established by dias projects that have been established by the European Commission. We have national initiative, so-called collaborative ground segment nodes and other activities. And on the other hand, we have the e-infrastructure services that are well presented within EOSC. And our idea is to federate these two groups uh, towards a, a large uh, scale infrastructure uh, and really bringing together the expertises on one hand from the EO sector with UDC, Deltares, Vito, Cloud Ferro, Theovin, Cessnet and Gianet uh, being involved in the project, but also with e-infrastructure providers. Some of them are identical, but we have enriched the consortium by EGI as an important player, by INFN, SurfSara, 
and also INCD, GeoNet and ChessNet are basically acting on both sides already. And the aim is really to tighten uh, the EO sector with the EOSC and the infrastructure uh, sector in a, in a very close manner. So that's the big C-scale ambition. Uh, how do we, or what will we provide? Uh, we will provide within EOSC a data archive uh, uh, consisting of current, but also historic long-term um, uh, data set from data sets from Copernicus and other satellite data. We will provide compute services, uh, which means on one hand cloud environments, but also HPC uh, services uh, that can be used for the analysis of the EO data. And we will provide an analytics platform on top of these resources so that easily uh, that an easy deployment of uh, solutions and use cases can be performed on top of this federated activity. Yeah, all these services will be integrated into the EOSC portal uh, with the ambition to do this uh, somewhere mid next year uh, so that uh, everybody can book these services and can make use of these services in his scientific questions. Yeah, everything uh, within C-Scale is uh, significantly built around the use cases. So we have defined six use cases or use cases already within the project. Uh, so that um, we have the users basically on board and uh, they drive uh, the development. But um, uh, we will also onboard other use cases within an open call uh, where we also provide virtual access and free infrastructure costs for them. Uh, so that even the use of the platform uh, will be significantly widened in respect to what's also new ideas and new research uh, communities. Uh, yeah, the idea is uh, really to validate and optimize C-Scale uh, during its development phase, uh, so towards uh, supporting an ag agile approach, um, getting user feedback immediately, considering their feedback in the current development. So that's one of the ambitions. Uh, yeah, the solution should be really cloud agnostic, independence of commercial closed and non-EU providers. Uh, so that's what we want to achieve. Cross and interdisciplinary exposure. So we don't want to see Earth observation and the use of the Copernicus uh, data just in a limited field. We really want to make it as accessible and this access should also be done in a fair manner. Yeah, in the following, I just want to present you three of the use cases so that you get an idea of what shall be possible. Uh, the first one is the Aqua Monitor that is currently running on the Google Earth engine in a quite successful manner. We want to transfer this uh, towards uh, EOSC and uh, the infrastructure and data that is provided between C-Scale. So that's um, one of the uh, big ambitions that are around to move that uh, from from the Google Earth Engine towards uh, EOSC uh, and having that uh, around. Um, yeah, the second one is WaterWatch, uh, a near real-time uh, update of the su uh, surface water resources, so of lakes, rivers, and wetlands. Also here, we want to have the real-time monitoring available within C-Scale. Uh, the third one uh, is then high sea, uh, again about water. Uh, that's uh, maybe also related due to the significant involvement of Deltares. But instead of the monitoring of the water areas, it's here, here now the big topic of water quality at, um, at the seas. Uh, again, here we will require a huge volume of data. Uh, we need uh, to have a lot of uh, computational capabilities in order to do to this global uh, monitoring of that high sea activity. Use case number four, five, and six, I don't present in detail in order uh, to keep the presentation short. Uh, so high resolution land surface analysis that's within the high res LSDA use case. Uh, the big topic, uh, the second uh, or not use case number five is the return use case from University of, um, of uh, what is it? Uh, uh, Wageningen uh, is focusing here on the monitoring of tropical forest areas uh, with the help of multispectral uh, satellite data as well as radar satellite data. And last but not least, a virtual European Sentinel data cube uh, where we want to provide um, a, new, um, yeah, a new access possibility to higher level Sentinel data uh, that then can be directly used uh, for, for the implementation 
of other use cases. So that's the six use cases that are already fixed. As mentioned, uh, we will also provide a number of virtual access resources from different providers. Um, uh, so that's uh, the overall numbers. Uh, we will have more than uh, 1,500 CPU core hours um, a year. We have significant HPC resources and we have more than a petabyte of storage that we will offer towards users uh, that they can book and that will be provided by this virtual access mechanism. Yeah, to sum up uh, already, uh, so the big ambition is to federate e infrastructures with EO data. Uh, uh, data services that are around and infrastructures that are around and to make really Copernicus resources easily accessible towards new research areas and the EO scheme general. We will deliver these federated infrastructure services, so the data, uh, the compute, uh, but also the analytics service uh, that we have presented um, that shall all be accessible to the, uh, via the EOSC portal. Um, one important factor for us is that the federation will be co-designed with the researchers, so they will be involved from the very beginning in the setup, and uh, we will make uh, this environment then available to others via the virtual access mechanism that is provided within the call option. And yeah, we are really looking forward in order to implement um, this uh, C-scale idea. Yeah, then I already thank you for your attention. Uh, here you find the contact information. So this info at cscale.eu. You can get all the details. You can also uh, uh, register and uh, ask for the questions there. We are currently setting up the web page and um, that's uh, still under construction, but also will be available soon uh, to the basically whole world so that we can inform people um, about our C-scale activities. There are also Twitter uh, uh, hashtags around uh, the C scale in order to receive updates via social media. Yeah, with this, I close now. Really, thank you for your attention, and I'm happy to receive some questions. However, I need to leave in five minutes latest. Oh, sorry, I was muted. <laughs> thank you very much, Christy. Ah, thanks. Um, so, I think there is a lot of material and very interesting material, as I anticipated. So I tried to uh, take some notes. Uh, I'm trying to share them now with you. Uh, okay, can you see the slide? Yes, yes. Okay, so in some cases, these are very personal notes. So you won't find what I need to buy for my refrigerator, but some of the things that I surely would like to discuss with you. Um, so, um, do you, uh, first of all, is there any questions for, for the speakers? Uh, things that you'd like to be clarified or that are not clear enough? Okay. So, um, from your presentations, I see uh, several uh, possible collaborations uh, bilateral in some cases, uh, which can be extended to a more general purpose approaches. So this is the second bullet that came up to my mind. So we, we can, of course, uh, uh, consume each other's resources, right? Especially when, when, when this is a specific action like uh, data storage or computing provision, then one uh, a project where this is not already the case, for example, uh, EGI is part of Reliance. Uh, <clears throat> one project may benefit of the resources of another. So you can you could apply for the, the tenders, you could do uh, the, the actions that are uh, necessary for that. But the second point is uh, make our services interoperable. Okay, and I see many opportunities here. Uh, one is bilateral, which I think is interesting, of course, because we could benefit from each other's services, but is the one that I less prefer in the vision of the EOS. So I would like, for example, any interaction between two services across our project to be driven by uh, the broader mission of defining protocols that would allow other similar services to perform the same interaction. So uh, on this respect, for example, and this is a question for DICE and um, EGIAs. Uh, 
I see an opportunity there for you to ex exchange, for example, the, the, the results of your, uh, uh, of your processing in EGI for all the use cases that you have to be fully integrated with data publishing and also with uh, what we are providing in, in, in open air. So the overall publishing in the broader context. Uh, so what do you think? What's your opinion in that direction? Who wants to start? Uh, Deborah, maybe? Yeah, yeah, I, I was thinking more or less uh, along the same line um, this morning when I was hearing all, all the different presentation um, on the open air services. So uh, for sure, one, op one possibility is to um, rely on the open air services for the publication of what comes from the Thai services or from the computing, uh, not, not to talk about DGI, but the ugly can speak for himself, but as a general picture, uh, I think that would be um, very interesting and would provide a um, complete uh, set of services and from the data processing, data creation, data processing storage, and make them available to the public uh, across the three project at least. Uh, maybe involving also other for thematic issues, but um, for general purpose, uh, thinking of general purpose services, uh, I think the tree project can yes. find a nice solution uh, for for user communities. Gagli? Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. Yeah, that's that's the kind of analysis where we, where, where I think we should. Zoom yeah, into. I mean, yeah, then we, we should make a technical <laughs> analysis, I agree, but at least in, in, in principle, uh, I see it a nice, as a nice idea. So would you agree on the fact that we should aim at more general purpose frameworks, so going towards, rather than bilateral uh, integrations for a broader... Sure, sure, okay. yeah. Yeah, then maybe the general purpose framework will lead to some bilateral work and bilateral integrations. Yeah. But the uh, use cases, yes, would be bilateral and would yeah. be expressions of applications of this. Uh, but I think this is the best we can do for the EOSC in general, right? So the more we do it, uh, the better. So um, we we have, uh, I, I like the idea we're all aligned on this kind of perspectives. Uh, I'm asking also to the colleagues from uh, C-Scale and Reliance, if they want to mention, if you want to have a, uh, a voice on this. Um, yeah, hi, uh, just this is Raul. Uh, well, regarding uh, from, from my side, of course, I see a lot of potential collaboration in, 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 in you know, uh, reuse of uh, different things that other of the projects of C07 are doing. Um, for, for the one hand, as I, try to show on, on the presentation I think uh, in our case we want to you know leverage existing uh, data sources data repositories like uh, the ones uh, from v2share or some others that may come from from dice uh, but also repositories like Xenodom uh, that is coming from open air Nexus and um, on the this is uh, also the computing infrastructure like you mentioned, the, the EGI uh, Jupyter Notebooks, uh, for example, this is very important for us as we are planning to use uh, this kind of environment as the default uh, computing environment for the research object, let's say. So we want to create some kind of libraries, Python libraries that will be able to um, access the resources in the research object and do whatever you do in your, in your library, but in, your, in the notebook, but then you can always come back to your research object. Um, and then after that, of course, um, we have uh, the part of the publication side. Like uh, I mentioned, this is very important as well. So our research objects, I mean, we have our platform, but what the idea is that we can actually publish this in, in some of these existing um, scholarly communication platforms. And uh, this includes, of course, uh, again, Zenodo, because it's a very popular one. Um, uh, so, for example, the idea now that we have is whenever we are creating some kind of releases of the research object, because we have like life cycles, then we, we will have the possibility to release this also into Zenodo. So we will just be able to deposit whatever uh, the user was, uh, the researcher was working on, the, the, the team of researchers were working on the research object as also one entry in the, in the Zenodo. And this will be able then to 
we need to further discuss this. Uh, we, we are in strict contact with cattle gobble in this kind of uh, uh, topics on how to nicely and to the point integrate uh, research objects in Zenodo mm -hmm. and in here, because uh, I think it's a key aspect uh, of, of your work as well. So it's good that this closes the circle in a way. Uh, Christian, from this scale. Uh, Paolo Christian wrote in the chat that he had to leave. Yes, leave. Okay, yes, he said five minutes. Sorry, I should have asked him first. Okay, so uh, we now have two parallel sessions. I hope many of you uh, will be able to stay to further discuss these aspects because it's really important for us to receive feedback. Can uh, I share my screen, Paolo, so yeah, that the participants can see the, the different sessions? No. As you can see, they have two different connotations. One is more on uh, uh, Nexus services in the national setting. So how can we uh, make sure that our services are useful, are useful uh, at the country level to support uh, the uh, dissemination, adoption, uptake, uh, improvements, uh, and channels regarding open science in general, open science practices. Um, this has a, a, a regional, let's say, a national perspective because uh, open air has representative at the national levels, which are trying to cope with the different maturity level, the different expectations in terms of technologies, roadmaps, which at the national level are different. So, what we would like to discuss is uh, to how to serve these people, uh, which are helping the open air, the open science dissemination in the best way. So, this is the first. Uh, uh, session, let's say. The other parallel session instead is more related with research communities and arise. So how the services can be better customized to serve the needs of research communities and arise. And that's, uh, of course, in collaboration with other infrastructures, in collaboration with the research communities, etc. This is this has more, uh, a more technical, again, um, bias, but still, uh, policies are in place uh, to the point that we can uh, uh, flexibly adapt to them and understand what they are at a community level. It's a different level of customization, let's say. Uh, so we have two rooms. Uh, how can we access these rooms, uh, Paula? Uh, the first one for no words. I think they already have received uh, an email where for, for registration. So as it's a closed session, Okay. Um, it's um, we shared um, via email the, the link for registration, so they maybe have just already received a, a reminder. As for the session on uh, research infrastructures, you will stay here in the same in the same room. Okay. Thank you. That's perfect. So uh, sorry for the the, the misunderstanding. Um, the time I, I I get it wrong because it's fifth. Oh, it's, of course. Yeah, that was the original yes. plan. Yes. Okay. It's it's happening now. We 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 won't have any any break. So, for the ones for the nowads who want to to move to the other session, please check your your email um, for the reminder of the to, maybe you can the link. maybe you can paste here the link to the other the session. link for registration. Yes, yes, I can paste. Or no, or the link. Oh yes, well, yes, we need the registration otherwise. Yes, yes, for Zoom. Yes. Okay. 